Let weaker people complain that the world isn't fair. You are the leader of your life. Take ownership of everything in it. I would come home at lunchtime and instead of having lunch, I would do 200 sit-ups. The little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Mm-hmm. Living that believe in life. Out here living that believe in life. Every day we live in that believe in life. What's it like we live in that believe in life? Living life, yeah, so we're grinding it out. Every single day we'll be grinding it out. What's it like we live in that believe in life? Oh, that believe in life? Oh. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and learn seven habits from the military that will change your life. Okay, let's kick it off with habit number one, make your bed. And while these lessons were learned during my time in the military, I can assure you that it matters not whether you ever served a day in uniform. It matters not your gender, your ethnic or religious background, your orientation, or your social status. Our struggles in this world are similar, and the lessons to overcome those struggles and to move forward, changing ourselves and changing the world around us will apply equally to all. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room, and the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. That seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened SEALs. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. (laughs) That you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, Start off by making your bed. Habit number two, take extreme ownership with Jocko Willink. Take ownership of everything. I call this extreme ownership. In the military, the best leaders and the best troops were the ones that took ownership of everything in their world. Not just the things they were responsible for, but for every challenge and obstacle that impacted their mission. When something went wrong, they cast no blame. They made no excuses. They took ownership of the problem and fixed it. You can implement this attitude as well, not only in your job, but in your life. Let other people blame their parents, their boss, or the system. Let weaker people complain that the world isn't fair. You are the leader of your life. Take ownership of everything in it. Habit number three, master leadership skills with Robert Kiyosaki. What's your philosophy when it comes to human resources? How do you get the right people? And then how do you keep the right people? It's the most important part of business. You know, that's why I went to military school. Then I went to, I was a Marine Corps. The reason why when I talk to military veterans, you probably have the most important skill of all. Because all we're trained to do, whether you're a general or a private, you're taught to be leaders. It is a number one skill of an entrepreneur is people skills and leadership skills. And unfortunately, most people don't have it coming into. So when I do my talks to veterans and all this stuff, I really want to encourage them, you know, because they're pretty depressed because they can't get it. You know, they're a Walmart greeter, which is a good job. But they're afraid to take the leap into entrepreneurship. So, but military guys, I don't care what branch of service, just by the indoctrination process and the survival rate, whether they go to combat or not, 
is that you learn leadership skills, people skills. You've got to have that. You know, whether, whether you're a, a team of one, you still have to deal with your customers and the good customers, bad customers, lawsuits, uh, taxes, government regulations and all this. They're all people skills. You know, so when somebody says to me, what do I need to learn? I said, boy, you better learn how to communicate pretty quickly to people you don't like and get them on your side. You know, how to win friends and influence people. Basic book. The number one skill of an entrepreneur is people skills. Also, if you want to have more confidence, self-love, and motivation, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. People want to know how to stop the laziness, and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. Most PhDs tell me I can't write. Yes, I said I can't write, but I can't sell. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes at work. So whenever I was getting beat down, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. Habit number four, take risks. At least twice a week, the trainees were required to run the obstacle course. The obstacle course contained 25 obstacles, including a 10-foot wall, a 30-foot cargo net, a barbed wire crawl, to name a few. But the most challenging obstacle was the slide for life. It had a three-level, 30-foot tower at one end and a one-level tower at the other. In between was a 200-foot long rope. You had to climb the three-tiered tower, and once at the top, you grabbed the rope, swung underneath the rope, and pulled yourself hand over hand until you got to the other end. The record for the obstacle course had stood for years when my class began in 1977. The record seemed unbeatable until one day a student decided to go down the slide for life head first. Instead of swinging his body underneath the rope and inching his way down, he bravely mounted the top of the rope and thrust himself forward. It was a dangerous move, seemingly foolish and fraught with risk. Failure could mean injury and being dropped from the course. Without hesitation, the student slid down the rope perilously fast. Instead of several minutes, it only took him half that time. And by the end of the course, he had broken the record. If you want to change the world, sometimes you have to slide down the obstacles head first. Habit number five is manage chaos with Patrick Bay David. Military was all about managing chaos. Everything's happening at the same time. You had to find a way to be poised. And you, we saw people that couldn't handle it. I remember one of the exercises that we had right before you become a, a graduate is you have to low crawl under these wires while above you, semi-automatic semi -automatic weapons are shooting right above you. And that's all you're hearing. It's late night. It's raining. It's heat. It's humid. It's terrible. And you're low crawling with this noise. That's chaos. You're panicking. You've never been through that before. What do I do? There was a kid on the base that same day there was a kid on the base that had to do this. He couldn't handle it. He stood up. Boom. Done deal. Okay? That's kind of like in business. You have all these, you feel like there's so many chaos in business. You don't know how to handle it. All of a sudden, you make one mistake in business, one stupid mistake, you lose your entire business because you don't know how to manage chaos. Habit number five, be super driven with Arnold Schwarzenegger. My parents really thought that there was something terribly wrong of being that driven. You know, because I would come home at lunchtime and then instead of having lunch, I would do 200 sit-ups. And then at night I would go to the stadium and I would be lifting weights. I would come home at 10 o'clock at night and I would be continually lifting weights. So it was like one of this insanity in the military. I would continue lifting weights no matter how the training was and how tough the basic training was. I would always then lift weights afterwards. And as a tank driver I would have on the side of the tank in the toolbox, I would have my weights, my barbells and my dumbbells and my exercise bench and everything there in order to be at any given time if we stopped driving the tank and maneuvers at two in the morning I would be able to pull out my weights and again lift for two hours my weights so I was really a fanatic about the whole thing but it's the only way you really get where uh, the way I, I succeeded because uh, uh, I became at the age of 20 the youngest Mr. Universe in London in the history of bodybuilding. And habit number seven, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is Embrace the Suck with David Goggins. When things hit you in life that you're afraid of or you're not good at, the first thing you're gonna say to yourself is, why am I here anyway? This isn't for me. The water's too cold. The sun's too hot. I'm getting up too early. Why am I doing this to myself? 
That's what the normal mind says. I had to start training my mind to think about how the f can I get through this? Not giving myself a way out. Never giving myself, creating a wall around all the f***ing ways out in my mind. And it slowly starts to build this wall so my mind knew this is not going to give himself a way out of here. In my first hell week, I had a huge setback. I was broken. My legs were broken. I had double pneumonia. I got rolled back to day one, week one of Navy SEAL training. I got through that second hell week. During the second hell week, I actually broke my knee. I continued to limp around for a couple weeks. I couldn't make it anymore. Got rolled back to day one, week one. I'll never forget standing there in front of Captain Bowen. He was the CEO in charge of Navy SEAL training at the time. And he had no mercy on anybody. If he believed in managing your expectations, I wouldn't be here today. He challenged me again. I was challenged my whole life, not by the mindset of managing expectations, by exceeding expectations, not by managing them. I'm standing there with crutches. I'm sitting in his office. He looks at me, he goes, Goggins, this is your last time. We're gonna push you through Navy SEAL training. This will be your third hell week in one year. We're not gonna put you through a fourth. So this is your last time. I'm sitting there thinking, how am I gonna get through this? I'm, I'm badly jacked up. My legs are broken. My knee is messed up. And he goes, you have a couple of months to get better. A couple of months isn't gonna do it. I won't get healed up in a couple of months. But I realized I'm gonna get through this shit. I'm gonna find a way to get through it because why I put barriers in my mind. So my third hell week, I went in there with pretty much, I would put a black sock on first. I would get duct tape. And I duct tape my ankles all the way up to my calf every single morning. And then I put another black sock over it. And what that did, that prevented me from moving my ankle. So I didn't really, I, I wasn't flexing my shin as much. And I started running with just my hip flexors. In this hell week, it was a bad hell week. We had a guy die on Thursday morning of hell week. I went on to become a Navy SEAL. Greatness is not something that you meet once. It's something that you meet thousands of times in your life and you don't reach it if you're not constantly in constant pursuit of greatness. So if my mind were to say right now, I'm great, I just lost. We're gonna grow. We're not gonna triple down on our strengths. We're not gonna do that crap. We're gonna work on our weaknesses so we grow. We need friction to do that. Without friction, there's no growth. Without friction, there's confusion. Confusion is, David Goggins, how did you become who you are today? I put a bunch of friction in my life and I grew. That's how I did it. You know how you get mentally tough? It's a lifestyle. Instead of hitting that snooze button in the morning and not making your bed, not cleaning your house, you don't hit the snooze button. You get up. You don't want to go run, you go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. You don't want to make your bed, you make your bed. You don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. You don't want to study, you study. That's how you start to callous your mind. So that became my life. If you say you're gonna wake up at four o'clock in the morning to go run, wake up at four o'clock in the, it's gonna suck. It's not gonna be fun. Do something that sucks every single day of your life. That's how you grow. Embrace the suck. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that is surprising that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one. Where do you need to better embrace the suck? Number two, what do you need to take extreme ownership of today? And number three, did you make your bed this morning? And if you made it this far in a video, you're still watching and you commit to taking action after watching this video, I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag believe down the video as well. The ninth week of training is referred to as hell week. It is six days of no sleep, constant physical and mental harassment, and one special day at the Mud Flats. The Mud Flats are an area between San Diego and Tijuana where the run water runs off and creates the Tijuana Sloughs, a swampy patch of terrain where the mud will engulf you. 
It is on Wednesday of Hell Week that you paddle down in the mud flats and spend the next 15 hours trying to survive this freezing cold, the howling wind, and the incessant pressure to quit from the instructors. As the sun began to set that Wednesday evening, my training class, having committed some egregious infraction of the rules, was ordered into the mud. The mud consumed each man till there was nothing visible but our heads. The instructors told us we could leave the mud if only five men would quit. Only five men, just five men, and we could get out of the oppressive cold. Looking around the mud flat, it was apparent that some students were about to give up. It was still over eight hours till the sun came up, eight more hours of bone chilling cold. The chattering teeth and the shivering moans of the trainees were so loud, it was hard to hear anything. And then one voice began to echo through the night. One voice raised in song. The song was terribly out of tune, but sung with great enthusiasm. One voice became two, and two became three, and before long, everyone in the class was singing. The instructors threatened us with more time in the mud if we kept up the singing, but the singing persisted, and somehow the mud seemed a little warmer, and the wind a little tamer, and the dawn not so far away. If I have learned anything in my time traveling the world, it is the power of hope, the power of one person, a Washington, a Lincoln, King, Mandela, and even a young girl from Pakistan, Malala. One person can change the world by giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, start singing when you're up to your neck in mud. If you want to know David Goggins' one simple trick to persevere no matter what, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Self-talk without real work is just a lie. Yeah. So my self-talk is me reminiscing back